Then this final product that I'm going to show you right here is the Dynamizer. This is a revolutionary, whole new way of looking at compression expansion. It's even, we don't even like calling it a compressor, but we have to put it in some kind of category. You see these zones here, instead of being frequency zones like a three band, uh, uh, a three band compressor that compresses the low, the mids, and the highs, this one works on level zones. So it takes the level coming in, the low level stuff that's in the mix, the high level stuff like the snare drums, and it treats them as zones. Now just because the meter is showing that the overall mix is coming up here close to zero, doesn't mean that all of the internal components, the acoustic guitars, the vocals, the sax solo, things like that, they're not all up there, they just all add together. To learn to use this, I suggest putting it on the master fader of a multi-track so you can solo things. You've got your mix pretty much done, you see what the overall level is, then solo the vocal. You'll see the vocals usually down here, minus 18, minus 24, and then you unsolo the vocal, you see all the rest of the mix happening. Snare drums are usually all the way up here, loudest. Kick drum next, the rest of the splashing cymbals and tom-toms are wide up there. Um, strumming acoustic guitars are usually down here somewhere. Uh, vocals and solo instruments are usually in, in this area, sometimes bordering up to minus 12. So now, if once you've figured out where things are in the mix, and you have a finished mix where you can't go back to the multi-track, where you need to turn up the vocal, which happens a lot, now there's only two, day, two ways to do it. You have to EQ in the vocal range, but it also EQs the guitars or you have to compress the whole mix, which compressors start at the top and compress down. So you're compressing your snares, you're compressing the drums, you're compressing everything to try to get the vocal to feel like it's more up in the mix. But it's getting compressed just like everything else. So it's a lose-lose situation. With this, you can say, okay, this is kind of where the vocal is. I want, this is the input side. This is where the input to it is, and this is the output. I can take things that are between minus 18 and minus 24, and I can make them louder without affecting the snare drum or the rest of the drums or things that are up here. It just makes the vocal louder. If I want to make the vocal softer, I can turn these down so everything in that area gets turned down. If this happens to be some mastering thing and I'm trying to put some analog uh, record that was recorded analog, into a compilation and it has lots of low end hiss, I can turn this hiss down because it's down here around minus 30 to minus 40. I can turn that down to get rid of the low level hiss. But what usually happens in a compander, an expander, is as the level gets down, it keeps pushing it down. So you'll find things going <laughs> toward the end of a fade. This one has two protection zones. Down here below the green, it leaves everything alone. So once the level gets down below here, it doesn't touch it. It only touches the stuff that you have selected. The high level stuff, I've elected to have a zone here of minus seven. Anything louder than minus seven isn't touched, isn't compressed. So you still have all the dynamics of your snare drum, but you can compress the internal part of the mix. On a lead vocal, let's say you're just compressing a vocal, you want to get it nice and sexy in the verses and get all that, you know, stuff in the... The only way to do that with a compressor is you've got to compress the loud stuff to make it sound like the low stuff is louder. With this, you just turn up the low stuff. That's it. You don't have to compress the dynamics of the vocal. When the singer goes, hey, or I, or whatever, those things stick out with the normal dynamics but the little low, you know, vocal things that happen in the ends of the verses or the sexy bridge, and you know, those just get pushed up automatically. You don't have to worry about that. Um, I just got a call yesterday from a producer working on a, a record. He's been working four, before he got this, he was working four days trying to get the perfect vocal sound for this Latin ballad. And he called me back and said, it took me, uh, I'm exaggerating if I say it took me a 10 whole minutes to do it and he got everything he wanted. You'll see the meters over here are a little bit different. They have these side meters that are called cloud meters. These show you, because you can't just go by attenuation or expansion, 
because there's different parts of the mix you're working with. Here you can see little dark areas where there's extra work being done. You can see here at around the minus eight area, I'm taking all this kind of stuff and moving it up so there's a lot more activity and it's a lot more dense in this minus eight area. So you can sort of see I'm not doing anything down here, I'm not doing anything up here, it's leaving it alone, and I'm doing all my compression in here. I can make changes to that and do something here, and you'll see stuff start to start to creep in lower here. So those cloud meters are starting to move down because more activity is taking place down there. So it keep, keeps a good picture of what all is going on. And then now you'll see this center thing is blue. That's because I'm actually doing more expansion, dynamic expansion, than I am uh, compression. And with this, remember it's always said, you know, if you compress too much, you're dead. You can't undo compression. Well, there are actually some things you can undo with this because you have this expansion capability in the middle of the mix, and it doesn't have to be linear. Um, I've even taken uh, old DBX tapes, which are a linear compression, not like Dolby, where it has a level of it doesn't do anything above that because that's where the tape changes over time. It just does Dolby compression down here. DBX was linear over the whole dynamic range. As tapes deteriorated, a DBX would no longer decode properly a DBX encoded tape. So with this, you can actually go in and change the curves a little bit, and by listening to your uh, mix, you can undo things and get rid of those changes that have been made in tape and directly, correctly decode a DBX encoded tape. And it also has the two little workspaces. It has uh, key input. Um, if you have some S problems in a vocal, you can accentuate that high frequency area. So its detector is actually seeing the high frequency content and it'll work also as a de-esser at the same time as it's doing your compression of your vocal. So this is, has a steeper learning. So you can see the clouds all moving and taking up more room now. Oh, uh, the advance button, if you turn off the advance button, it just, everything moves together. And the advance button, you can go in and do uh, individual internal adjustments. Um, and uh, it's got uh, uh, different, you can turn off zones, turn it back on. Uh, the attack and release are all ganged together, which is recommended until you're really, really good at this. Then you can unlock them and have different attacks for different zones. But otherwise, I would uh, recommend keeping them locked. Um, you can sort of see, based on this, what the compression ratios are, but uh, you'll find that it's much easier to do what you want by just looking at these little zones and figuring out where the instrument is coming in, where you want it coming out, you just grab them and do it. And with any compression, moderation is the rule, and just do it as little as you need to get the effect that you want. Uh, you have output control, but uh, also there's an auto button that'll automatically set the output level. And there is a similar to the Finis limiter built in here that just has three settings, fast, medium, or slow, just to catch some peaks if you, uh, if you get uh, rambunctious and are uh, pushing the limits here. So those are our three, uh, four audio plugins uh, offered by Roger Nichols Digital, and uh, they've been on the market since May. And they're uh, RTAS, VST, audio units. Um, TDM versions are coming. Um, within the next uh, three weeks, all of the uh, dual binary Intel versions will be done. One of them's done today, um, and the rest of them are coming a few days apart. Next on the agenda are uh, three plugins that I announced at uh, Winter NAM the Bitchenizer, the Wendelizer, and the Levelizer. Um, those we put on hold to get these, because these were quicker to get finished, um, and uh, they'll be ready by uh, uh, AES uh, San Francisco. These are uh, 249 a piece, and then there's a, a metering thing that we haven't gone over called an Inspector XL, that's basically five plugins all by itself of metering, 
to tell you how much stuff is over, it does statistics to tell you how many overs you've had. Um, uh, there's a thing to, to actually detect flat tops where somebody else has clipped something and then turned it down so you can't see it. It'll detect those and show you where they are. NBC and all the post houses and broadcast com companies uh, around the world use that as their metering standard. And, uh, and that one is $299. So these are $249 a piece. They're all iLock protected. And uh, uh, there are demos. There's 14-day uh, demos available online, rogernicholsdigital.com. And uh, if you, all you need is an iLock, and we'll upload 14-day demos to your uh, iLock account.